Today I have the pleasure of talking to a member of parliament in Latvia, Mrs. Julia Stepanenko. Hello, Mrs. Stepanenko. Hello. Uh, we all know already that the situation in Latvia has become very difficult with regard to the restrictions that have been enforced to limit the spread of the coronavirus. At least that's the explanation we are given. And in Estonia also very many people follow uh, what is taking place in Latvia very carefully. Because we know that uh, what is taking place in Latvia may very well take place in Estonia in a few weeks. So please uh, say a few words to begin with about yourself, uh, about your political career. And thereafter we could discuss the situation in, in Latvia. Thank you. Thank you for, very much for giving me the floor. My name is uh, Julia Stepanenko, as you know, and uh, I'm a mother of four. Uh, I'm a lawyer and it's my second term in the parliament. Uh, I'm also a founder of a new political party, Latvia at the first place. And uh, we stand for the freedom of uh, choice when you talk about uh, all the mandatory vaccination and everything that we come across now. Uh, of course, we stand for um, Latvia first, not Latvia first in the, in the death rate that we see now, not Latvia first in the restrictions that we see now. We really stand for Latvia at the first place with uh, people for Latvia government at the first place. We really need to uh, fight for uh, all the rights that have been forgotten for all those people who, starting from 15th November, have lost their jobs. Yes, absolutely. In Estonia also we are witnessing a very sad situation, unfortunately, because very many people are losing their jobs, uh, not only in the private sector, but also in the military. Uh, also many police officers are being uh, thrown out, thrown over the board. Uh, and the situation is getting more and more difficult uh, by the day. So uh, perhaps you would give us a brief understanding of the situation that has developed in Latvia. I mean, uh, there have been uh, very many headlines also in the Estonian media and elsewhere describing your situation as catastrophic. Uh, is the situation really catastrophic or how, how do you see it? Well, if you, if you talk about the infection rate and death rate, it was really looking very bad. Um, but the thing is that uh, maybe there were some mistakes made. And uh, the problem is that the government put all the blame on the unvaccinated people. Well, we had lots of resources. We really got uh, all the, everything we needed to prepare for this, uh, for this Delta variant, for all this... Uh, autumn uh, that brought many problems to the healthcare system. But the problem is that the resources were not, this is my opinion, that the resources were not divided really wisely. And uh, this, is, uh, this is why we are he here, uh, this is why we have this situation. And the problem with the death rate, which is very, very sad, really sad, is that uh, we probably might have looked at the, at the possible way to cure people right before they get into the ER because they really don't get much attention when they got sick at home. And the problem is that we really need to help our doctors to get to the COVID patients and to find uh, the way to check up and uh, find the way not to uh, make it to the last minute. So. Uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the well uh, one of the milestones that we really need to reach. But the, the problem is that we have too much PR actions and too much festive uh, things uh, to spend money for. But uh, we have forgotten that there are really uh, things that we have uh, been doing uh, wrong. Yes, you're right. It seems to be the general approach that not much attention is paid to taking care of uh, people who have caught COVID at home before they 
uh, arrive at the point where they need to be taken to the hospital. It's not the, only the problem in Latvia and Estonia, it seems to be the problem everywhere that the vaccines are seen, uh, seen as the only solution to the problem. But uh, let us now turn to the really striking headline that we read a few days ago also in the Estonian media that in Latvia a decision was passed by the parliament not to allow unvaccinated members of parliament to participate in the work of the parliament. They are not allowed to enter the building of the parliament and they are also not allowed to participate in the work of the parliament via Skype or Zoom or any other means of telecommunication. Uh, and even more, members of parliament are left without their salary. So are those facts, first of all, correct? And then my question would be, how did you arrive to this really incredible, unbelievable state from the viewpoint of uh, the principle of democracy and the rule of law? Well, that escalated really very fast, let's say. And two days time, actually, we got this decision. Um, uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we had our first online session uh, without me being present yesterday. So 15th November was the first day that this law was uh, actually enforced. And I checked the system. I could not get into that system online. Although I presented uh, the testing certificate in order to prove that I'm still safe, uh, even if I'm still working from home, just like all the other members of parliament. But I have to say that uh, I'm not the, actually I'm not the only one. I'm not, I'm not the worker, of course, I'm a representative, but uh, thousands of workers uh, have uh, came across the same, the same problem like me uh, yesterday. They were actually um, banned from work. They were canceled from working. Uh, even in the remote uh, in the remote uh, jobs they have, so um, we have uh, we have really dramatic situation if you talk about uh, the job the market the job market because uh, starting from fifteenth uh, of November uh, all the all the institutions uh, that still have their um, workers work online they have to um, they have to actually sack them and uh, not only sack them, the workers have to stay three months without salary and in order probably to change their mind. So they're restricted from work. They're still, uh, they're, they're still actually at work like, like me and mm -hmm. still a member of parliament, uh, but they will not get any salary as well. And they are made to change their mind probably. And this is the coolest thing we have seen actually uh, because uh, well there are people who are going for the vaccine just because they are forced to because they have to actually feed their family and take care for uh, for their kids uh, but there are still people who uh, who are protesting and they are trying to uh, reach the court and they're trying to prove that uh, the constitution in Latvia uh, has to has to actually be um, has to be uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. The laws ha have to be taken care of, and the Court of Constitution, the Constitutional Court of Latvia, uh, will receive. Uh, I believe it will receive many and uh, many uh, papers from our workers as well. Uh I talked to some very prominent lawyers in Estonia uh, and uh, asked them if it would be possible to consider such a decision of the parliament as constitutional in the Republic of Estonia. And they told me that it is unthinkable to consider this as constitutional. Because what we're dealing with is not simply a person who is a simple employee. We are talking about a representative of the people, an elected representative of the people in the parliament. So this is basically, I think, a, an unprecedented situation that a, an elected representative is being 
thrown out of the parliament, uh, uh, he is not allowed, or he or she is not allowed to participate in the work of the parliament, because uh, what we will arrive at with this kind of, with, uh, through this kind of an attitude is a situation where there cannot be dissenting voices heard in the parliament because all the representatives of dis dissenting voices have been removed. So uh, my question to you is that uh, have you already uh, submitted uh, a complaint to the court, to the constitutional court? Do you plan to do it? Uh, and what are lawyers telling you about the uh, probability of uh, arriving at a, a just solution? Well, even the lawyers in the parliament that work in the parliamentary bureau, they uh, they said that uh, this law really breaches constitution and they would not um, agree with that. They would not agree with this law. And uh, of, course, of course, we're working on the complaints, we're doing it and uh, we have to file it pretty, pretty uh, soon. But uh, the, the signal that uh, the parliament is sending uh, to all the people of Latvia and the signal that the parliament is sending to Europe or probably the world is that there's a certain amount, there's a certain um, amount of people uh, who cannot be represented in the parliament because they are my voters and uh, I represent um, more than 1,200 people who uh, uh, who put uh, mark on the list when they voted for me, so they chose me, and I'm their representative. I still I still want to do my job, and I'm ready to do it, um, notwithstanding all the circumstances. So, uh, I'm, and I have to represent their points of view. I have been doing it ever since. And I'm, uh, I have been one of the active, one of the most active members of parliament um, in, 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 the, in the second term, surely. So I have been, uh, uh, I have been presented as one of the most active uh, parliamentarians who uh, take part in the debates. And I have uh, many, many um, also proposals that I have sent to the different laws. So I'm really active. I'm not like uh, just sitting through my term. And uh, I really need to represent those people who have trusted uh, me to take care of them all those all these uh, four years. And this is this this is what we hear now. What we hear now is that they are not allowed to have their representative in the parliament. So the next question is that uh, are they allowed to live in Latvia, are they allowed to actually live their life here? Or do, 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 do you need them to go away somewhere? This is absolutely inappropriate and this is unconstitutional. Yeah, there is another question that might be asked very soon, uh, and namely, will unvaccinated people still have the right to actually run to parliament, to participate in parliamentary elections? Because if you can't work in the parliament as an unvaccinated person, then why should you be allowed to participate in the elections in the first place? So I'm afraid that they will also raise this uh, this question. But uh, let me ask you another yes. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, this, this discussion has already been uh, rising about this issue. You're absolutely right, because this is the next question. And uh, the, the reason for this law, for this very unusual law, was just to um, just to raise awareness about the uh, COVID policy of the government and to raise trust in the parliament and to show solidarity with everyone who has been vaccinated. So um, if you think in these categories, so you can also come, come to the next decision. That, that's right, absolutely. So, in principle, what we are seeing is that the principle of the freedom of vaccination does not uh, apply anymore. There seems to be an obligation to vaccinate, a completely opposite principle. Just, uh, just yesterday, an article was published in the Estonian National Broadcasting Union's website in, in which the ethics professor of the National University of Estonia argues that there is a solidarity obligation to get vaccinated. But uh, I was just thinking that uh, when things will continue in the same manner, 
we might end uh, up in a situation, not only in Latvia, but in all of Europe very soon, where only vaccinated people will be allowed to participate in parliamentary elections. And then we will no longer have this problem that you need to remove members of parliament who are not vaccinated because there cannot be any unvaccinated members of parliament. And this to me sounds like a clear dictatorship already, like a medical dictatorship or something like that. Well, uh, you can you can find about the same problem with judges. Well, judges are also uh, are also being told that they will uh, get some uh, also some dis disciplinary um, problems when they don't present the QR code, and this is also a very very um, this is also a very very difficult uh, difficult time for uh, justice. As you know, if if the judges are being forced to make their choice, this is this is not um, this is not the democratic republic we're uh, dealing with anymore. So, in principle, what we are facing is a situation where you cannot have any judges who are sympathetic to people who are not vaccinated, because all of the judges who are remaining are already people who are who have submitted or, or uh, succumbed to the to the pressure and have been vaccinated. So basically, the also judges are removed, not only politicians. Uh, well, yes, this is the problem that the judges are uh, um, the, 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 the judges are being uh, forced to uh, present the QR code and the judges are being uh, actually uh, removed from uh, from courts and this is and this is another crazy thing that's simply incredible simply incredible uh, what about the media uh, is the media generally uh, on your side in latvia or are they rather on the side of getting rid of you as a member of parliament well i have to say that um everyone is uh, shocked about the decision of the parliament but um, I don't get much support from media, uh, maybe because most of the media is, uh, well, pro-governmental and they really would like not to see this problem at all. But what about human rights organizations who are fighting for constitutional rights and the principle of democracy? Have they stood up to defend you and other members of parliament who are being uh, who are not allowed to participate in the work of the parliament? Well, as I'm saying, this problem is uh, quite new. So we're now uh, working on letters to all the institutions just to, in order to inform them if they haven't heard about it, yeah. about what is going on in Latvia. So. Well, I'm just asking because in Estonia, all human rights organizations or all organizations which have presented themselves as human rights organizations are keeping complete silence. They're not saying anything about the situation where people are being fired and where basically an apartheid regime is being enforced. But let me ask you finally, how could we help you in Latvia? How many members of parliament are there, first of all, who are in this situation? Uh, and how could Estonian politicians, Estonian citizens, organizations uh, and people from other countries help you in Latvia to stop this dictatorial uh, regime from spreading its wings? Well, uh, first of all, please uh, don't repeat our mistakes. Please don't do this. Because uh, so many people who are in despair these days uh, they could easily be taken care of the other way. So this is not the right way to choose. This is absolutely not the right way to choose to fight the virus. And we would probably see the numbers rising again and again, even if you make all the unvaccinated people just live in the basements. <laughs> this will not help. Mm -hmm. Because there has to be another way to fight this virus, not the way of... Mm -hmm. So you're already helping me by spreading the, the news, by spreading the message. And uh, this is what I really wanted to say, that we really need some help with our human uh, rights. Because we really need to help all the people in Latvia who have been 
unlawfully uh, held out from work. So uh, we really need some help uh, internationally. I think, uh, and we need to to have we need to have attention to the situation. This has not to be like that. And please do not make such mistakes. Well, we will definitely do our best to inform as many people in Estonia about the situation. Uh, and not only in Estonia and other countries also. Please keep us informed about all the new developments, if they can be called developments at all, so that we could spread the word. And I just want to wish you uh, strength to fight this fight, which is absolutely necessary. And I am absolutely sure that there are hundreds of thousands of people in Latvia who are standing behind you and whose appreciation of the work you do only grows once they see that you don't accept it as a solution to give up your principles. So thank you very much for this encouraging example you're showing also. Thank you very much, Varo. Thank you for your, uh, for, your, for your work. Thank you. All right. We will pray for you and I look forward to hearing you from you again. Thank you very much for finding time to talk Bye -bye. to us. Thank you. Goodbye. So such is the situation in the Republic of Latvia, just across the southern border of Estonia, as described by the Member of Parliament, Julia Stepanenko, who is not allowed to participate in the work of the Parliament simply because she has not found it necessary to have herself vaccinated against the coronavirus. It is absolutely clear that we are dealing with thoroughly undemocratic tendencies and in order not to let them spread more widely, please share this information. This is the least we can do to help Latvians, but this is also something we need to do to not allow those things to take place in our respective countries. Thank you very much for watching and see you again.